Okay, so let's talk about Apache Iceberg mechanics. So basically, when you work with an Apache Iceberg, what actually happens, like what mechanically happens? So first we'll do is we're gonna examine what happens when you add data or you write data to an Apache Iceberg table. So the first thing that's gonna happen is that you're using some sort of query engine, something like a Dremio and other engines that work with Apache Iceberg. But the first thing you need to do when you add data to an Apache Iceberg table is they're going to actually write the data files. And that's typically gonna be done in a file format called Apache Parquet. Now Apache Parquet, these files, they allow you to hold a lot of data in them in a very smaller, relatively small amount of space. And the cool thing about them is what they do is they actually break up the data into chunks of rows called row groups and actually track metadata on those row groups within the file. Now, the benefit of this is that like a tool like Dremio, when it's reading a parquet file, that parquet file might have 100,000 records, but let's say every 50,000 records is a row group, okay? It can then look at the statistics or metadata on that row group to determine, hey, does this actual group of rows actually have any data that's relevant to the search that I'm doing? So if not, it can just skip reading the entire 50,000 rows, making it, giving it the ability to scan the data a lot faster. So all that data is written into these parquet files. And generally what's gonna do, it's gonna group the data based on how the table's partitioned. So for example, using that sort of voter data, let's pretend that these files represent new records for the, the blue party, and this represents new records for the red party. So they're written into separate distinct files, that's how partitioning works. And then what's gonna happen is that those different sort of grouped files will then get aggregated or listed in a manifest file. So a manifest file is gonna be not the actual data, but a list of the files that contain the data. And what it actually does, it takes all those statistics for each individual file and rolls them up. So that way, instead of having to go to each file to read all those file statistics, all those file statistics are actually right here in the manifest file in one place. So that way the engine doesn't have to go open up all these individual files, which takes time and slows down a query to kind of understand, hey, what files have what, okay? So essentially this would be a summary of all those row group statistics for each file. So let's say there's two row groups in each parquet file, there'd be one listing for that file that gives you the summary of the the two row groups together, okay? So you have like a, a, a entry for each individual file that has data in this table. And again, you have to imagine that these are big tables, which is why the data is being stretched across multiple parquet files, which is why you would need something like Apache Iceberg to track the data set that spans multiple files. Now, once we've written all these manifest files that track the individual files, we need to know which manifests belong to the current version of the table. So that's done through a manifest list. And the manifest list tracks all the individual manifests for the table. And kind of like how the manifest file would summarize the statistics for each individual file, the manifest list has a summary of the statistics for each manifest. So essentially what they'll do is they'll take all those individual file statistics and turn them into one manifest level statistics. Okay, so basically, hey, this manifest covers this range of values, covers this partition, things like that. And then all that is listed here in the manifest list. Because again, the less files the engine has to open, the easier. So now the engine can open this manifest list and say, okay, well, this manifest doesn't even work for my particular query. And now those files never have to be touched. And that speeds up the whole process because I'm not opening, spending time opening and reading those files. And then what's gonna happen is that each manifest list represents sort of one point in time, like one version of the table. But there has to be somewhere where we know all the versions of the table that have existed up to this point, all the different manifest lists from the past. And that's gonna be tracked in a metadata file. So this is usually referred to as metadata.json, like when you look in the actual files. And this generally has all the information you'd want about the table, like what is the table's current schema and historical schemas? What is the table's partitioning scheme and historical partitioning schemes? What is the table's current snapshot and its previous snapshot? And again, a snapshot is analogous to a manifest list. So all that high level data about the table is in this metadata file. So basically starting from this file, an engine can figure out, hey, but the problem is that there's a new metadata file created every time the table changes. So if I'm Dremio, how do I know which metadata file to read? Which metadata file tells me the current version of the table? Well, that's where the catalog comes in. 
So there's always going to be some sort of catalog mechanism, which we'll get to more detail later on. And the catalog mechanism has a list of each iceberg table that you have in your environment. And then each table is going to have a reference to where the metadata, the current metadata file is. So essentially, once we're done writing all these files, we then go to the catalog and say, hey, going forward, table two will refer to this metadata file. And then that's how you know that the transaction has successfully completed. Because if it doesn't get to that final step, then any future queries or people trying to see the table won't see that transaction because it didn't officially commit by updating the catalog. So the catalog becomes the arbiter of, sh of basically when things actually happened. Um, you know, so you can get partially through all of this and not complete it. The catalog doesn't know about it. So then it doesn't affect anybody else querying the table going forward. And that's how you end up achieving some of the guarantees that Iceberg provides far as like consistency and, 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 and atom, atomicity. So now what happens if I want to read the data? So in this case, if I write the data, I start with the parquet files and I work my way up and then when I'm done and I update the catalog. But it's actually the opposite way when I want to actually look for data. So if I'm querying the data, a tool like Dremio or others that can query a iceberg table would first go to the catalog and say to the catalog, hey, I'm looking for table one. And then the catalog would say, well, table one, the metadata file for table one is located right here. So then the engine would go find that file based on the location, usually on some sort of storage layer, and then read the metadata file. And the metadata file, again, would have like the partitioning, the schema, but most importantly, it'll have the list of snapshots. So we can identify which snapshot we want to look at. So for example, table one has three snapshots. Snapshot one, when the table was first created, we probably maybe inserted some data and then we inserted some more data for snapshot three. But for this particular query, we're doing what's called time traveling. We don't want to see the newest version of the table. We want to see an older version of the table. So we actually specifically requested an older snapshot. And that metadata file has a list of all the snapshots. So it's able to tell us where snapshot two is. So the snapshot two or the manifest list for snapshot two is going to have a list of all the manifests that make up the table at that point in time. Okay, so now we can go to that manifest list and we can see the list of manifests and eliminate any ones that don't make sense for our query because of the way they're partitioned. And then we see what manifests remain and those manifests will have a list of files and we can take a look at those file statistics to determine, hey, which files are even worth reading. And then once we've done that, we can then actually go and read the files with the data and run our query. And then that's essentially how the read process would go. So the read process starts from the top going down. So writing is bottom up, reading is top down. Okay, and that's essentially the mechanics of how read and writes and when you're interacting with an Apache iceberg table occur. And so that, and again, this is important because understanding sort of what's going on behind the scenes when you use tools like Dremio and others helps you kind of understand where, you know, if something goes wrong, what, where you are at and how you can respond to it. So I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day. I'll see you there.